So today we're going to be talking about yogas and astrology and how important they really are and uh, you know how important you should be looking at them for because um, get a, I get a lot of messages on my website. First of all, I don't do consultations. Okay, that's what everybody asks me. You know, can you look at my chart? Can you look at this? I don't do that. So this is like a disclaimer that don't send me any emails. I will never respond to them regarding your consultation because that's I'm not that spiritual for me to do those kind of things. Okay, however, I teach them so you can do it yourself. But as far as like uh, you guys are concerned, <clears throat> people, ask, you know, they message me like, okay, I have, um, uh, I have uh, Guru Chandal Yoga and I have, uh, uh, you know, Pitra Josha, I have Mangal Josha, I have, uh, I'm a Manglik and all these and, you know, will my life get destroyed? And the first thing I want to say about yogas is that yogas do not affect your chart as much as other things, okay? So just because you have Pitra Josha, okay, doesn't mean that your life is over. I mean, they're billionaires with that yoga combination, and yet they're living the life, you know, they want. Um, the problem is, is that most of these astrologers out there, you know, they try to scare people. Like, okay, you got this yoga, that yoga, that yoga, and you're going to have to do something about it. You're going to have to spend this much money on it. You're going to have to do all of these, and that's not true. <clears throat> but, you know, before I get into this, let me just say to the people who do not know what yogas are, yoga is a, a union of planets. It's a union of planets in a birth chart in Vedic astrology where <clears throat> certain planets, whether they are in conjunction or whether they are looking at each other, aspecting each other, or they're exchanging each other's houses and signs, it creates a certain kind of uh, um, a, a combination, a union. So in Vedic astrology, they have like 200 or 300 different name of these combinations. Again, okay? each thing is doing certain things in their life. So yoga is Raj Yoga, meaning like kingly yoga, which brings in wealth and fame. There's Parivartan Yoga, where two planets exchange either, each other's signs. So if Mars is in Taurus, Venus is in Scorpio, they're exchanging signs and then there's Manglik Yoga where Mars placed in the 12th, 1st, 4th, 7th or 8th house becomes a Manglik Josha which is pretty much comes into yoga so that what yogas are now how important are they? they, they that's, the, that's the last thing I look at in yogas okay because yogas do not matter if you have certain other combinations in the chart you're, you will have a far better life than you concentrating on just yogas and seeing which good or bad yogas you have because everybody has good and bad yogas. Okay, so that's, that's one of the important things you need to understand. However, there is certain yoga, certain um, unions that are very important. Okay, so not all yogas, you know, are as important. You know, because you have to move in with the time. See, 4,000 years ago when astrology was invented, we were living in such times that the meanings of yoga stood at that, at that time. They, st they stood their ground. But now, some of the meanings of this yoga is, you know, it, it, they have completely faded away. Like, uh, there's this yoga called a um, Gach Kesri Yoga, where Moon and Jupiter are in the first, fourth, seventh, or tenth house from one another, or from the moon. So if uh, from the moon, if you count four, one, like the conjunction of moon and uh, uh, Jupiter together in the same house, that's position one, then moon, or and then Jupiter four places away from the moon, okay, and then seven places and ten places, that's considered Gach Kesar Yoga. And that pretty much means that this person is going to get a lot of elephants and horses in his life. He, that's how he's going to be gifted with all these things. Now, there's so many people, there's millions of people with that yoga in this uh, country alone, in the United States, yet I don't see them running around in uh, elephants and horses. But back then, you know, people received uh, animals like an elephant and horses as a gift, as a luxury gift item. Or somebody like, if you own a Ferrari today, it's kind of like equivalent to that. You owning that elephant. 
So this is why most of these yoga do not matter anymore. So the meanings that you listen, the meanings that you read on the internet about the certain yogas you have and then you feel bad after that, like, oh my God, I have this yoga, what am I going to do? You don't have to do anything because it's not doing anything for you. That, that yoga, the negative yoga uh, might actually have a positive meaning now. Like Guru Chandal Yoga. Guru Chandal Yoga is a, com, uh, is a union of Rahu and Jupiter together in one house. Back then, they used to say this person would be, you know, going out of, uh, out of the family values and religious values, will be following his own path and it's not good. Back then, it wasn't good because you were supposed to be very religious. You were supposed to follow all the r rules and rituals. And, but now, Guru Chandal Yoga is actually positive because you need out-of-the-box thinkers. That's what Guru Chandal Yoga does. So you need somebody who's thinking differently, who is uh, thinking outside this, this norm of box that's called religion and society. You know, we have to think outside of that because we're not living in that time anymore. So this is why these yogas have are big, either have no meaning or become completely opposite of what they mean. Okay. So the the important combination of the yoga is actually when two planets are looking at each other. So if one planet is in the first house, there should be another planet in the seventh house. That's also known as a Parivartan Yoga. Okay, and uh, what it does is activates the chart. So, you know, most of the charts are sleeping. This is why you have so much poverty in this world, and not every there's, there will never be a time when everybody's a millionaire. Never. Okay, and but the thing is, people who have the combination of where two planets are looking at each other, they're far better off than, you know, than people who have all the good yogas, all the Raj yogas, yet all the planets are sleeping because nobody's looking at each other. See, when planets look at each other, they activate one another. That means they're feeding off of each other and they're energizing the chart. Okay, so let's say if your Saturn is in the seventh house and Mars is in the fourth house. They're both looking at each other because Mars is looking at four places from itself. So Mars is looking, if Mars is in the fourth house, it's looking at one, two, three, four places. So it's looking at the seventh house from the fourth place. While Saturn aspects the tenth place from itself in its aspect. So Mar Saturn in the seventh house is looking at Mars in the fourth house. So what's happening is both of them have an eyesight on each other. And so what they're doing, they're activating the chart, their energy, whether they're hating each other or loving each other. They're creating this energy that creates action, that creates movement, that creates, uh, you know, things happening in their life. So, you know, when you have a dull chart, when nobody, but no planet, when only, when one planet is aspecting the other, but the other one is not aspecting the, the you know, the opposite planet, and some charts don't have any mutual aspects to each other, those charts are known as sleeping. So, they, they, they're very, very, you know, just... They, they're not as activated. So even when the time comes for certain yogas to manifest like Raj Yoga or, you know, any kind of uh, positive yoga, it won't be that much of an effect because the charge is sleeping. But the way it, this can be canceled is through transits. So early transits of so your Jupiter and, uh, and Saturn are looking at each other for like literally one year your chart is activated, so it's time to do things. Also, if your Nemansha chart, the divisional chart, if your Nemansha chart shows aspects that is also activating your, uh, activating your life and your chart in the second part of life, and if you have the Narayani Bhautalit chart, okay, that means that is also activating the, uh, the Parivartan Yoga. Okay, so this is, but obviously the, so for some of you this may not, may not make sense because this is Vedic astrology. But once you know this, it becomes really easy. It becomes like second nature to you. So if you want to know, learn more about what I'm talking about and more, you know, these basic knowledge and secrets of astrology, check out my web link below. And uh, hopefully that will enlighten you about this subject of astrology. Thank you.